hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel in this video we are going to see how to execute a data flow job a sample data flow job using a data flow runner as in the last video we have seen that there are three two three types of data runners i mean uh, the runners that you can use one is direct runner another one are corresponding to apache spark and flick and one important runner that generally uh, you know people prefer to uh, run the data flow jobs into the production environment is something called as data flow runner so in this tutorial let's try to execute a sample word count uh, kind of a job using data flow runner so uh, i'm not gonna write a separate uh, snippet of code instead what we are going to do is we are going to use the word count code uh, that comes with uh, the apache beam library so if you wanted to check out that code then you just go to your uh, apache beam installation and under the example section you will be able to see a wordcon.py file and this is kind of a you know a ready made code that is available as you know kind of a word count a basic example of uh, how to write a python script for doing the uh, you know data flow apache beam job so uh, this is the code that we are going to execute i just wanted to show you one thing is this input this input like this uh, gs colon data flow hyphen sample this is the bucket which is a public bucket and it is available for everyone irrespective of whether you can see it in your gcp environment or not but this bucket is a public bucket and it is accessible to everyone uh, who wants to use it and there are some sample files that have been already copied and we are going to use the exact same bucket exact same input for doing the word count so my my point is the motivation here is not to show you how to write a data flow python job but to show you how to run that using the data flow runner and how to do the monitoring of uh, that particular job okay having said that let me show you the command that we need to execute so if you see this is uh, this is where the word count uh, python program exists right that's what we have seen uh, just now apache beam examples word count then i want to trigger the execution in europe us to one region this is again my this is uh, this this file is going to act as an input file for my data flow job I want to store the output into this particular location like I have this bucket gcp-dev409815 under that I wanted to create the results uh, directory and under that under outputs I wanted to store the uh, output of this particular word count program then runner this is uh, the place where you configure using which runner you want to use or you want to trigger your data flow job here you can use a direct runner or data flow runner whichever runner that you want to use then under which project uh, this needs to be executed this is again my uh, trial account project that i am giving here and every data flow job needs a kind of a temporary location which you should specify here which bucket which directory under that and uh, data flow job will create its temporary files like let it be you know some kind of files that it needs while doing the shuffling of the data uh, some uh, storage of some temporary files it it needs it it is kind of a mandatory requirement basically whenever you want to trigger a data flow job using data flow runner right so this is a uh, kind of a execution command that we need to uh, trigger on our term terminal and let's uh, trigger it I, i'll just change few things here because i already have this kind of a uh, directory structure uh, created when i ran the sample version of it if you see i already have this uh, results so let me do one thing i'll just make it as word count word count results and it count out okay i'm just changing the name of the directories with this let's trigger the job yeah i'm on to my command prompt I'll just clear it and let me trigger so uh, it will take some amount of time uh, because it's kind of you know uh, all the processes that happens uh, behind the scene like 
it will trigger the job data flow job it will uh, try to create its you know it will try to create its own infrastructure to trigger your job so it will launch uh, the worker nodes into the region that you have specified that uh, since we have specified here that I wanted to trigger this job in Europe waste one what data flow is gonna do is it will try to start the workers in Europe West one like if you see this log it says starting one workers in Europe West one B now this is kind of a ABC it has the uh, zones and it, it has a liberty to start the worker in any of the zone that you have mentioned in your region so Europe West one is going to have three different zones Europe West uh, 1a Europe West 1b and Europe West 1c in our case it has started creating this worker in Europe West 1b region next time if you execute it could start it in either a zone or C zone or maybe within the zone B itself but it is all depends on uh, the CPUs or GPUs uh, that are available at this point in time uh, into the GCP environment region that you have given in the uh, your job triggering execution command it may be possible that uh, it does not have any GPU resources because it, it's kind of a free account and it is certainly going to have some kind of extra overheads so it, it could be possible that uh, your job may fail because it could not trigger or it could not start the worker node in the zone or in the region that you have specified so in that case uh, the first thing that you may uh, try as a part of uh, uh, troubleshooting your job just change uh, the region let's say uh, earlier if you have given Europe US 2 and it has uh, not ran successfully try changing it to 1 try changing it to 3 right and that way it may execute and then uh, obviously based on the error that you are getting you can troubleshoot it more uh, coming back to the logs here it was saying starting one workers in Europe West 1B region and if you see it says worker have started successfully and this is what I just wanted to show you guys in this uh, tutorial that how to mo monitor what are the important logs uh, that we actually you know uh, always check when when we trigger the data flow job because all these things uh, are uh, going to give you important information uh, regarding the job trust that you have just started that okay number of workers started is one then now the workers have started successfully right it will take it's it's kind of you know a long running job right because it creates the entire infrastructure behind the scene and then executes your job once the job execution is completed it tears down all the resources uh, that it has created so it takes time uh, generally and that's the reason data flow job uh, works best when you have you know really huge amount of data because it spends so much of energy so much of uh, you know kind of a uh, lots of things happening behind the scene to create this kind of infrastructure structure then process your data so by having this kind of a data flow runner in place if you are just processing kind of a very small amount of data then I will definitely suggest you that don't go with data flow runner because it would be kind of a overkill or overhead uh, just to process few uh, bits and bytes of data you are just you know uh, utilizing so much of in infrastructure so uh, not good in any way like from the cost perspective from the resource allocation perspective as well right so if you have a very small requirement then uh, definitely go with direct runner it is very uh, you know uh, it plays a very significant role in these kinds of execution but if you are really have you know lots and lots amount of data or streaming data which is like continuously running then it makes a perfect sense to use uh, the data flow runner and it, it uh, you know always uh, justify that okay I need this kind of a infrastructure so let data flow uh, use its capabilities to create the dy dynamic infrastructure ba based on the data needs that you have and data volumes that you have and then uh, we trigger our jobs so it's still uh, at this uh, workers have started successfully stage and it must be executing the jobs uh, behind the scene
but let's wait uh, till it completes the job so it says uh, all workers have finished up uh, finished the startup process and began to receive work request then it says finished operations so if you just scroll down below it says finished operation finished operation and it says executing operation finished operation NCT in process setup success okay so here is the first success message that we get execute uh, executing success step success 32 cleaning up starting worker pool tear down that means here it has started it has started one worker node right it is because it is just a work word count program so very limited amount of data so it has uh, processed your word count logic and now it has started worker pool tear down that means it will now uh, just shut down all the workers it will release all the memories uh, that it has uh, launched or configured just to execute the data flow job that we have triggered then it will stop the worker pool and it, it says uh, worker pool stopped and tearing down pending processes that means whatever resources it has allocated any memories that it has uh, you know uh, halted upon in terms of uh, you know doing some kind of intermediate swaps or whatnot it will just release the entire uh, resourcing for the job and then it will print that the status of this job is in done state right so this is what the console logs of uh, this entire word count job and now let's also take a look at how the logs are getting displayed on the console and before that let's go to the uh, let's go and see if it has created the output so if you remember our uh, word count command then we have asked for uh, data flow to create this word count underscore results directory so we have this word count underscore results directory and in that it has created this count underscore output and if you just click this and if you click this uh, file you will be able to see the word count output this is a very standard uh, program word count like name of the word and then how many time it has occurred within that input file that we have uh, referenced to as an input of this program so this is what the output and simply it is a kind of a text file that it has created now one more important thing which i wanted to show you is where to see all these logs so if you just search for data flow here and so here there are multiple sections that you can do if you wanted to see the logs of a jobs then you click here on this page jobs and you know whatever amount of jobs that you have executed uh, as a part of your data flow execution will come here uh, that too very spe uh, specifically if you have mentioned the runner as data flow runner then all the jobs will be displayed here right this was uh, one of the earlier successful execution i have and as you can see here there are some failed executions as well uh, because of some or the other reason uh, which i have mentioned the jobs were failed and you can track the status of this job that this these three jobs have failed what is the sdk version uh, that has been used for this particular uh, job execution what time what type of job because uh, data flow is kind of a unified programming model where within the same unified library you can trigger the badge as well as streaming jobs so that's why it displays you what kind of job it was right and some of the more auditing information about the job how much time it took uh, to you know uh, perform this job action so let's go ahead and see this i am clicking on this and it will uh, give you a detailed log view of uh, the job that you have recently executed so if you see this these are all the stages that uh, your word count program has that it will first read your input file then it will do the splitting uh, it will do some you know other uh, logical stages like group and then you have to sum as well because we wanted to get the count then format in what format you wanted to output your results and then ultimately write it uh, as a text file uh, so that you know users can view the results 
so these are all the stages uh, in which your program flows through like from reading your text file to uh, writing the data into and there are multiple other details also it will give you like if you wanted to uh, see this particular graphical representation as a tabular view uh, in terms of how many steps were there but uh, taking a graph view of it makes more sense makes more easy to understand that uh, for this read operation how many stages were uh, executed whether those are succeeded or not if you wanted to go into the details of this this particular step then you just click here and then you will be able to see how what happened within the read stage itself like it map it did this some map operation then some other and these are the you know uh, pretty much apache beam libraries that uh, gets internally used right? but this is how uh, we generally troubleshoot or uh, see the logs of our data flow job uh, using this particular uh, graph then there are some other tabs which you can take a look into this is the job graph then you have the execution details that uh, which step uh, took how much amount of time these are again uh, you know kind of uh, details of the execution that it gives you and you can just try to go through you know, all these details here then job matrix there are some uh, you know automated matrix uh, that data flow job will always gives you as a as, as if it's uh, results and you can just use these uh, matrix if you wanted to use uh, in in the further processing like like for example based on the throughputs if you wanted to do certain actions uh, then you can use the job matrix uh, which comes as a result of your data flow job cost how much cost has been uh, you know uh, spent or how what is the cost of this particular operation right? how much it, it has cost you so all these details are uh, being displayed here you can take a detailed view of these details one last thing uh, from the monitoring perspective if you click on this job graph here you see the actual logs the print statements like application level logs if you wanted to see then you just click on this show and it will display all the logs that uh, you know these are the console log logs basically the one which we were seeing on our uh, terminal right these logs the exact same logs are also being shown and produced uh, over here and this is where the cloud logging uh, feature comes into the picture that data flow omits all the logs or uh, data flow uh, sends all the log to cloud logging so that it is available uh, as as a view uh, to the developers or whoever wants to do some kind of analysis uh, on the data flow job monitoring okay so uh, this is what this is how we uh, monitor the entire uh, data flow job guys i hope you you must have found this very helpful because uh, troubleshooting is the most critical factor of any any job basically not necessarily a data flow job but any kind of job let's say it is failing on production then going uh, into the roots of that particular error why it is coming and all these kinds of steps small small steps uh, which gives us more clarity on what's going on uh, behind the scene will using like all these kinds of details i'm pretty sure that you'll be able to troubleshoot your jobs uh, very effectively uh, and you know resolve all the errors uh, that that you guys are coming across so thank you very much guys thanks for watching this uh, tutorial and i'll see you in the next one before i sign off uh, please do subscribe like uh, share uh, to my uh, youtube channel thanks and i'll see you in the next one